Nick, can you reveal your cloner? So here is, here's the cloner setup. The cloner is an object and then a null. And then if you, as long as you put in, uh, as long as you put in odd numbers in your cloner, you're gonna get odd spacing like this. So if I turn this to 18, it's just gonna go ring, null, ring, null, ring, null, ring, null, ring, null. If I go odd, it'll do the same thing, but then on the next line, it'll fill in the gaps. So now you can get these patterns like this. And this works with the cloner just because it iterates between these two. In fact, uh, this was really fun thing to, to learn about. I was trying to build a piano and a piano, as you know, let's just get a cloner going. Cloner, boom. Piano, as you, as you do. Don't need top coat for that. All right, so let's get this set up here. Piano's got keys, right? But it's got two keys, and then it's got a black key, and then a key, and then a black key, and then two keys, and then three black keys. You know you know how a piano is. Or just look at one, you can see the pattern. But what if you want to build that pattern? Well, check this out. You can take another cube. Okay, let's shrink it. Move it up. Move it back. Put this in the cloner, okay? So now we have to we have to go turn on fix clone. I think it is. There it is. So now this will move around. And so now what we have is white key, black key. So now we we have to shrink this down so they touch. Now we have. Let's just texture this so you can see it really easily. White. Oh, I might be backwards. Black. Boom. That's the black one. Let's make that. Just turn off the color channel. We'll do it. Oop. Did it backwards. I knew it. Swing. Okay. So now what we want is white, black, white, black, white, white, black, white, black, white, black, white. And then it starts over. Okay. So it looks like we need one more. And so now how do we set this up? Well, now we could use a null to just skip out on some of these black keys. And we just build it straight up. We build an octave of piano keys in our cloner. So now, how does it go? White, bump, 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 bump. Now there's there's a black key. We could call this black, actually. Okay, so white, black, white, black, and then another white one. Okay, now what? Okay, so now it goes two in a row, but we can't do that because the spacing would be off. So we gotta put a null in between it. Bonk. Now that put a space there, okay? Now let's duplicate this whole thing again. Let's pull this down, Thunk. okay, there we go. And now we got the space there. Now white, black, white, black, white. And then another, another black one, swoop, doop, like that. There's our there's our octave. That's our that's our piano, right? Okay, so then it starts over. So now from here, there's another, and then it jumps back up to the top. So what does that mean? We just crank it up. Look at this magic. Ding piano. Right? Isn't that cool? So that is how you can kind of use the cloner object and kind of hack it with knolls a little bit. Same way I did with this. Just put nulls in between it to make a pattern, and you get the piano. Ba -bum. Um, does that help? Did that make sense, Crossfader? I'm sure you got it right when I showed you, but I thought it'd be fun to make that. Bad Robot, thanks for hosting. Thanks for uh, thanks for doing that, and um, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Kev, awesome. Aliens, good. Oh yeah. Yeah, Vitas, you know, you know, I like my pianos. So yeah, so that, that is, that's fun. So even, I mean, just to take this a little further, you know, the, that's, that's, that's how I model. <laughs> what? And then I type 88, <laughs> cause then, you know, uh, although a keyboard doesn't start on uh, C, so you're kind of missing 
kind of have to offset a, a couple here, but uh, you get the idea. But uh, you can also just animate this. Like you could animate a thing flinging through here. So you could take a, uh, let's say a, a plane effector. Bonk. Okay. And then put this on linear. Move it over 90 degrees. And now we can animate and just turn this up. So now I want to go effector parameter swing way up. Right off screen up. Okay, so now when I pull this plane effector in, we're going, doo -doo 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 -doo. we're building in a piano. So let's set that up. Let's do that. Let's grab signal. Let's grab our uh, effector here. Just drop this on X. We want the whole timeline, maybe a little bit shorter. Maybe it's like 40 frames movement. And we want it to start and move that way. Now it looks like we need to go a little bit further. So let's go to the end and turn this up 40 good how much further we got to go is that the right thing I'm moving it is oh, interesting base 5000 let's play that back Ooh, I see. I got it backwards. So that's a good starting point. I got to flip it. Uh, or no, actually, I got to leave it like this and change the zero. I got my, my got my curve backwards. I got top to bottom, which I usually do top bottom to top. It doesn't really matter as long as you flip these numbers. So, uh, for example, if I copy and paste this number here and put negative 300 here, I'll get the same thing. But now it's now it's reversed the other way. And now I could just flip my graph to make it look more normal. So that was my fault. Swoop. And it looks like we don't have to go that far out. Turn that down. So we got our piano. That's good. Now we can also come in here and add the, oh boy, what are we going to do here? The delay effector. So that'll give us some easy ease in a little bit. But then we can also go to here and go spring. So now we're going to go, whoop, there's our piano. And then, of course, we can go in and ra add a random effector. We can get like a little player piano thing going on here. We got, let's see, random. Well, that's not cool. But we could not move position and instead move rotation. Let's go that way. That's it. So let's go 20. And then we'd have to come in and offset our rotation point on our clones. Um, which I'm not sure if we can do in the cloner itself, maybe. Can we can we get the offset? We got a transform here. Okay, let's just sit it here and see if we could offset. Because what we need is the rotation of this key to be back here. That's where a piano that's where a piano key really moves. We could just do it to all of our objects as well. That might be the the right way to do it. Is to just um, take all of our our objects and move their move their rotation point back so you can do that if you want um, but there you go got a got a piano <laughs> that's fun cool spring to it ah yes I did it Vitas top coat on the piano hey if you're gonna ask me to put top coat on the piano like what what am I gonna do what am I, what am I gonna do not what am I going to do? Not put top coat on the piano. So first, the, first of all, we need keys with a little bit of bevel. Right now, everything's kind of flat. You could model these out. Technically, the the black keys are a little bit thinner and they ramp back and all that stuff. But in this case, I'm just going to grab our null and turn it off. And um, I also feel like we need another null. Did I mess this up? No, black, 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 white. Yeah, so I actually messed up. So there's supposed to be one more null right there. See, this space is not there. I need to take this null and put it in at the end, I think. Ha ha! Ha ha! Look at that! Fixed it. So now there's no now there's spaces on everywhere. These uh these black keys here all if we're gonna make this try to look like a real piano, 
are um, a little too large. And then, you know, you could cut out keys and offset it, do all that stuff if you want. We're also going to um, bevel them, which I'm going to turn down. And I'm going to go more on X with these. And then I'm going to move them down because they're too, they're too high. They need to sink in. Like I said, you could do this better by cutting these keys out. But now we have slightly better slightly better keys and I don't know like I don't know how far you want to take this but we could take one of these and it's kind of like take take the flat part of the the um and we'd have to undo it and then bevel it and whatever I'll leave that up to you if you want to make these more perfect you could do that uh, I'm also gonna take these white ones boop and I'm just uh selecting them all by holding command that way I could change them all at once and I could uh, change this edge just to give it a little edge to catch because if everything's flat it's not going to catch light very well. Um, the other pretty thing that we could do is just put a uh, back plate against the back which would just give it a little bit of just something to reflect as if there's a, a backboard here. So that is also a possibility. So now we can actually just render something like this, which by the way, while we're doing this, we could duplicate and make a bottom as well, just so the bottom has something to reflect. And these are just below the keys right there. Okay, so now we just, we kind of set that up. And so we need to make a few textures. Let's take a new material uh, or we could just uh, open up top coat here start fresh I'm gonna dock this in our in our scene here so wing okay so let's get to it first of all I want some widescreen man give me that widescreen doing a lot of square stuff lately so had default square for a while okay so here we go that's that's close enough I think for a little bit of a little bit of render so now what do we need to do well, we need to make three textures. We need to make the black keys. We need to make the, the kind of piano gloss and then the, the white, the ivory. So let's start with the piano gloss. Let's do just a gloss and a lacquer on top of that. And I'm going to remove our color channel. Just it's supposed to be black anyway. Let's add this to both our top and bottom. Now let's create a new material by unselecting materials and just clicking a fresh one. So in this case, I'm just going to do lacquer. That's going to be our uh, black keys, which we have to come in and texture specifically. Actually, it looks like they're already textured that, that I set this up. So I'm actually just going to replace. And the way I do that is I click this texture and then I, you can see the difference. I'm holding down option or alt and that's going to replace this texture with this one. So let me do it again. Drag, hold down alt, let go. That just replaced this texture with that one. Okay. And now instead of doing that, we could actually just grab this. Uh, white key here and with the white key I'm going to um, I don't know let's say let's just leave it white and then I'll show you the difference between that so it's just white with lacquer right just a real simple reflection setup and you hit render what do you got you got kind of nothing um, that's because we still have our standard light on and it's just not quite right so um, we need something to reflect uh, so in this case, uh, let's go ahead and use HDR Studio. Let's use some render settings from Top Coat for GI. We might not use GI, but for now, let's just use GI Draft. Let's turn on Interactive Render Region. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Now the floor we don't need in HDR Studio. So let's go ahead and remove the floor in the background. That'll brighten things up a little bit. Okay, so there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. Um, let's get a longer view on our keys here so we can see a little bit more. Now our gloss needs a little bit of work. This cube down here, uh, which is that, that doesn't need to be that. Uh, I guess that's fine. We'll, we'll fix that later. Uh, it's just a little too shiny, I think, for our, um, our, our back. 
which that is going to be this texture, which that, let's go ahead and turn off the color, uh, which it is. It's just not redone. So sometimes this happens. You have too many things going on, especially with the um, interactive render region. If you ever want to just reset your materials, you could come in here and say, render all materials. And it's just going to re-render these previews because this one's supposed to be black. And watch what happens when it does. Boom. Now we got it. Okay. So let's see what we got. That is our piano gloss. We can name it that. And it looks like one thing we want to do is make this blurry part a little bit more blurry. Okay. Or actually, let's just see how blurry it is. There's a gloss layer just on its own. Pretty blurry. Maybe a little more. Got it. Okay. So let's turn our lacquer back on. And we can actually turn our Fresnel amount lower, get a little bit more glossy. Now, this is going to need a little bit of blur as well. It's not that shiny. It's also probably not that smooth. So you can go to bumps and just say noise. And this is just a big noise. Um, there's also one called subtle noise, which I use a lot exactly for this reason, which is this. So now we have this noise. I'm going to turn up our scale, turn down our bump depth way down. And this is just very subtle. I mean, this is a couple percent. Look at that. Even that's too much. So I'm going to go all the way to zero. I'm just going to type in 1%. Look at that. Just that little kick right there gives it something. Can you can you guys see that? And that's a subtle change. But I want you to see that. See that little imperfection right there? I might even scale it up bigger. There you go. Just so it's not perfect. So if you're going to animate a camera across this, you're going to have little divots here and there. I'm going to add one more percent to this because I want to see what that is. Good. A little bit more blur. And then I'm going to tone the whole thing back because it's just not that reflective. Okay, sweet. So I think our keys could be can be more reflective. Now that's going to be a little bit of blurry as well. So let's go to this dull. I'm going to have a dull layer below and a shiny layer on top. You can look at the difference on that. Now that's way too shiny, but we could pull this dull layer down just to give it a little bit of, of color, just like, so it's not pure black. However, the glossiness could go up. So if we go to our lacquer, we could remove the Fresnel a little bit more, get more shine on that. On that. Now we're going somewhere. Now the only thing that's bugging me, there's no space between the piano and the back of this key. And we could fake it. We could add like ambient occlusion, all that stuff. But I think we're okay. So here's where we're sitting right now. We have the front of the piano. We have the back. Let's look at it from a different kind of scale. And, you know, this doesn't go up that high. This doesn't go down that low. So unless we want to um, build and model that out, we're going to have to stay up close a little bit more. Okay, but that's not bad. Now you get these, you get these set up a little bit nicer with a better, uh, better um, angles on them. Put a little bit of space between these black keys and the back here because there's really a little bit of ledge there as well that's not as reflective. And I think you're onto something. So um, I want to just try a couple more HDRs because this is just the standard one. And uh, let's go ahead and pick maybe a couple different studios. I'm just gonna click one and see what it looks like. There's a, there's a little more color in here. I'm going to lower our resolution just a bit. But you can see we get drastically different setups there. Let's try just real simple lights here. That's a cool one. There's our resolution. And then let's, I don't know, let's try some like indoor-y kind of like indoor with some bright windows kind of thing. Whoa, that really popped. I think we need to rotate that, but I think we're on to something here. Let's see what it does. Rotate it. Got a little more color in here. Got a little bit more brightness going on. Don't like the way it's bouncing off the bottom piece, but we are getting some really nice reflections right there. And I think the last, uh, never say last. Don't do it, Nick. Don't fall into the trap. It's a drinking game. Okay, I'm going to last. Uh, dang it. I, could, I literally just said it.
and I it's like uh it's like a habit now. I'm gonna grab our camera, zoom way in like this, try to get a cool angle of it. Try to get a rough kind of idea on where our where our frame is. I'm gonna add a little little depth of field. Okay. I'm gonna start high so we can see it. I'm gonna focus right there. Middle, that's our C right there. I'm gonna come over, turn up our GI settings to like probably medium at least, and then go to physical, turn on depth of field, and we may need a little bit more depth of field. These are pretty large. Uh, it's not quite to scale. So we can go into our physical and say 0.1. Let's just make sure it's right. Okay, so now we got super depth of field here. Now I also turned up our render settings, so we're going to get a lot uh, slower render here. We could also turn down our res. But that's right. That's right. It's just way too much. So let's go back to 0.8, something like that. Just a little bit of blur up there just to draw your attention down. We've got a little bouncing going on here. We got a little bouncing going on here. Not bad. Pretty interesting. And uh, let's go ahead and do a higher render settings for a final render. Let's put this up to three. Let's check our output. <clears throat> let's kick a render out. Here's where our uh, top code ended up. Our um, our kind of skull thing. So th this is a little bit more of the shiny one. And if you want that more sparkly tone, you could build that texture separate. I just didn't want to go into too much detail, but that's uh, all lit with just those orange. And then this might brighten up as well. I'd probably brighten this light up a little bit more to give that a little bit more detail. So um, cool, cool. <laughs> Rasmus, thanks for the question. That is, uh, I think EJ's Jiggle Deformers got you, got you covered. Um, let's see what else here. Uh, <laughs> uh, gosh, Twitch, huh? So this is Twitch conversation. Um, all right. Isometric. I am Octane. Thanks for that. Uh, Ultimate Wolf has a question. Throw it in there, man. Um, Shots, yeah, yeah. Professor RGB knows whenever I say one more thing, that is time to do the shots. So here we go. Here is uh, everything rendering. It looks like my Mac Mini. Oh, it's not on. Excuse me a moment. Our power went out last night for like five seconds, and it must have turned off the Mac Mini. Um, most everything else I have is on battery backup. So hopefully that'll be there. So there you go. Not so bad. The depth of field is pretty subtle here. Um, I might come in and try to make it a little bit more. And while we have the time and while we have uh, a little bit more render power now, I may just bump this up to, to four just to get a little bit more detail and talk to you guys. I do like this layout. What's everyone think of Twitch so far? Any feedback? How's the buffering going for you guys? Excuse me. Um, this is awesome. Got a link here. Oh, that is awesome. I do like it. So here's, <clears throat> here's one thing I'd be excited to, to show you guys is the new, um, the new, uh, clay texture in top coat kind of does something similar to this, which would be really fun, but I just need a model. So maybe I'll grab one of those sculpting models and we can mess around with that. Um, I should learn how to do at least just some basic modeling just so I can like move things around. But uh, what the heck, let's go do that. It is 320, that's plenty of time. Any questions, uh, any other um, 